Hello friend, welcome again to my channel Tudor Tech TV. And today we're going to talk about the seven layer of OSI model. But before we go there, I will ask you please to subscribe, like, comment to the video and we're going to have more to come. That be said, we're going to start now. Let's go. The OSI model, which is stand for Open System Interconnection Model, defined and used to understand how data is transferred from one computer to another in a computer network. But in the most basic form, two computers, which is mean two endpoints, connect to each other with LAN cable, network media and connector like a RJ45 with the sharing data with the app of network card from the network but if one computer is based on Microsoft Windows and the other one has Mac OS installed then how these two computers are going to communicate with each other in order to accomplish successful communication between computer or network of a different architecture, the seven layer OS model or open system integration model was introduced by the International Organization of Standardization in 1984. The open system interconnection model is actually a conceptual framework on how application communicate over the internet. There are seven layers within the model and the description of the layer is used to help user identify what is happening within the network system. The OIS model are typically described from the top layer down. The layer are described as application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. To cut it short, you can call it, all people seem to need data processing, which is mean from application to physical layer top down. So it's really easy to memorize, or you can take it from the bottom up, which is gonna be, please do not throw sausage pizza away. That's really fun, you know? <laughs> In this video, we will describe the layer from the top down as the top layer is the application layer or layer 7. This is the layer that most users interact with and will recognize it. The application layer provides network service to the end user. The service are protocols that work with the data the client is using. One of these protocols may be the HTTP or HTTPS that is used with web browsers such as Google Chrome, Brave, Firefox, Internet Explorer. Other example of applications that use this layer are Office, Outlook and Skype. Basically all those interactive applications provide a set of services that allow the application layer to supply data to and receive data from the presentation layer. The second one is the presentation layer or layer 6 which performs the uncomplicated task of syntax processing or converting data from one format to another. For example, say you are ordering something from an online store like Amazon. These transactions are typically handled in a secure transmission which means that the data passing between the store or the website application will transmit encrypted data to the presentation layer that will need to be encrypted and processed. This layer under translating the data from the top layer which is presented in application format 
to network format and vice versa. After the presentation layer process the data from one format to another, the information is then passed to the session layer or application layer depending on whatever the data is transmitting or receiving. The session layer controls the conversation between different computers. The session layer or connection between machine is set up, manage and terminate at layer 5. Session layer services also including authentication and reconnection. Basically, the session layer creates communication channel called session between devices. It's responsible for opening session, ensuring that remains open and functional while data is being transferred and closing them when communication ends. The session layer can also set checkpoints during a data transfer. If the session is interrupted, devices can resume data transfer from the last checkpoint. The next one is the transport layer. The transport layer, which is layer 4, take data transfer in the session layer and break it into segments on the transmitting end. It's responsible for reassembling the segment on the receiving end, turning back into data that can be used by the session layer. The transport layer carry out flow control sending data at the rate that mach matches the connection speed of the receiving device. Therefore, the transport layer manages the delivery and error checking of data packets. It regulates the size, sequencing, ultimately transfer of data between system and hosts. One of the most common examples of the transport layer is TCP or transmission control protocol. The next one is the network layer or layer 3. The network layer is responsible for receiving frames from data link and deliver them to the intended destination amount base of the addresses containing inside of the frame. The network layer find the destination by using logical addresses such as IP, internet protocol, The network layer has two main functions. One is breaking up segment into network packet and reassembling the packet on the receiving end. The other is routing packet by discovering the best path across the physical network. The network layer uses network addresses to pack and to route packet to the destination node. The next one is the data link layer. At the data link layer, directly connect nodes are used to perform node-to-node -node data transfer where data is packed into frames. The data link layer also corrects errors that may have occurred at the physical layer. The data link encompasses two sub-layers of its own. The first is Media Access Control or MAC. This provides flow control and multiplexing for device transmission of over a network. The second one is the Logical Link Control LLC. This one provides flow and error control over the physical medium as well as identify LAN protocols. Link or layer 2 is considered the most complex of the layers. The layer is often divided into sub layers. The layer set up link across the physical network. When this layer receives data from the physical layer, it checks the transmission errors. The last one we call it layer 1 is a physical layer. 
The physical layer is responsible for the physical cable or wireless connection between network nodes. It's defined the connector, the electrical cable or wireless technology connecting the device and is responsible for transmission of the raw data which is simply a series of zeros and one while taking care of the bit rate control. As the lowest layer of the ice ice model, this is concerned with electrically or optically transmitting raw and structured data bit across the network from the physical layer of the sending device to the physical layer of the receiving device. It can including specifications such as voltages, pin layer, cabling or radio frequencies. Finally, at the physical layer, one may find physical resources such as network hubs, cabling, wireless adapter, repeaters, network adapters or modems. Now the question is why we need the OSI 7 layer model? What, 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 what's the advantage to have it? So I'm gonna list you a couple advantages and explain roughly what we can what we need it for. The first one is the OSI model help user and operator of computer networks. What's that mean? It's really performing troubleshooting by identifying which network layer is causing an issue and focusing effort on that layer. So it's really helping to understand. Another advantage is the OSI model helps network devices, manufacturers and networking software vendor to create devices and software that can communicate with products from any other vendors allowing opening and interoperability. It can also define which part of the network their product should work within. It can also finally communicate to users at which network layer their product operates. For example, only at the application layer or at session layer or across the stack. Therefore, the purpose of the OSI reference model is to guide vendors and developers so that digital communication product and software program they create will interoperate and to facilitate clear comparison among communication tools. While some people may argue that OIS model is obsolete due to its theoretical nature and less important than the four layer of the TCP IP model, I would say that it's difficult to read about networking uh, technology today without seeing references to the OSI model and its layer because the model structure uh, to frame discussion, discussion and discussion of protocol and contrast various technology. If you can understand the OS model and its layer, you can also then understand which protocol and device can interoperate with each other when new technologies are developed and explained. Okay, this is the end of my video. I hope you did like my video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share. So I'll see you to the next video to come. Cheerio!